Oh, JR, here it is. Listen to the sound. Turn the sound up on it. <laughs> You can see, watch when it makes contact, you can see the little puff of blood right here, right there, very subtle. The blood and the skin. In Ron's, you can see a mist too. Blood. Yeah. I like my bump too, you can tell I'm knocked out. Because I didn't take a bump at all, I just fell as if I was knocked out. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's legit, you know? <laughs> yeah. That was legit, alright. At least prove that I know how to go through the ropes. Look at the way this guy throws me out of the ring. <laughs> Look at me, I'm knocked out, dude. He's throwing me. I know, he just landed right in the second rope. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the kick. I swear he kicked me full on. Oh, yeah. He kicked me full on right in the nuts. Look at the kick. So as I was getting up, I was like, oh, fuck, man. I was hurting from that and shit. Are you fucking up? <laughs> oh. yeah, so we're, we're talking about Sabu, we're talking about J.R. Benson, June 19th. 1994, San Jose Civic Auditorium. The ref gets bumped, Sabu goes up the ladder, gets, I almost said the panties, believe it or not, <laughs> gets the belt, <laughs> and then um, I come in, throw the powder in his eyes. Between me and Brenda, we get the belt to Chris, the ref up, Chris up, Chris onto the ladder, ladder up, so it looks like Chris climbed the ladder. Right. And you know, screw job, and the ref comes to, and Chris wins it. Sabu at that point would knock Chris off the ladder, who would take a big bump. We didn't anticipate the ladder being broken, by yeah. the way. Chris would take a big bump, because he does that one from the top of the ladder over the top right. rope to the floor. He's done it before. So Chris was going to take like this outrageous, stupid bump. And then Sabu was going to grab the chair. And Actually, I was going to come in with the chair. Yeah, that, that the way it happened. I was going to come in with the chair. He was going to take away. Give me a shot. Yeah. Throw me out of the ring. And Rick runs top. So that was the, that was the schedule finish. The ladder broke, which was one problem, but he, they did manage to get the belt. I came in, I did the powder thing. We got everything going. The only problem was the broken ladder, so we just propped it against the turnbuckle. Yeah, Chris was in the corner. Which was good enough. Yeah. Chris still was thinking yeah. it wouldn't be the same spectacular bump, but it would yeah. be a nice... might have been harder because he couldn't grab the rope the way yeah, it was. Right. But he climbed up to the top of the ladder as it leaned against the turnbuckle, right. and he was standing there with the belt waiting for Sabu to knock him out. So Chris knew what was still knew the finish. And I don't know if Sabu... Just didn't want to do that finish, or if he just didn't think we were going to because the ladder was broken, or if he forgot, or what it was. But I'm standing there, and I'm waiting for him to go towards Chris on the ladder, and that's when I'll come in with the chair. 
But Sabu starts calling towards me. Well, come on in. Come here. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You know, yelling to the crowd. Get in here. Get in here. Get in, Get in here. here. And yeah. I'm standing there like, well, I mean, I wanted Chris to do his spot. I want Sabu to go knock Chris off the top. So I'm standing there thinking. I, 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 was, I almost yelled back at him since he was being so obvious. Knock Chris off the ladder first. But, you know, you can't do that. So I'm just standing there, standing there. And he kept yelling and yelling for me to come in. And Chris is standing up there. Everybody's standing around looking dumb. So I, okay. Toss the chair in. Come into the ring. Grab it. He grabs the other end, and he's, you know, like, all right, fight for it, fight for it, you know, grab it, and then just full-on kick in the nuts, just nails me, you know, so I'm down there trying to catch my breath as I get up, staring at this chair, just getting up, and just, um, comes full-on with it, just like a full-on baseball bat swing, and I've taken a lot of them to the head before without putting my hands up, so I had no problem keeping the hands down, I cringed, but, you know, I was looking at it, but when it hit, I mean, I could hear it, I felt my eyes cross, and it knocked me, knocked me out a bit, so I just fall down on my ass, like, you know, oh, like that, and, um, I wasn't out cold, but, I mean, I was, you know, pretty dazed, and then he grabs me by the wrist, grabs me by the pants, picks me up, and just whips me at the ropes, doesn't even give me a chance to hook the rope, he just throws me through the ropes, and luckily I managed to hook the rope and took the bump out, and, so it knocked me pretty good. I had my blade in my hand because I was going to do my forehead was the plan. And I was sitting there with my blade trying to come to and I felt it running down the back of my neck and said, okay, well, I obviously don't need a blade. So put the blade away and they yeah. carried me out. And I sold being stunned really well because I was fairly stunned. Sort of like, just like Paradise, actually. Yeah. When, you're, yeah. when you're about halfway there, it's not hard to sell the rest of the way. So, I mean, I looked like I was dead as I walked back and yeah. took the six stitches, which I've exaggerated just much as 32 in some yeah, interviews. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which is, and how much did it say in the Observer, I think? Um, 13, not, 11 or something? 13, yeah, 13 yeah, in the Observer. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Now, skipping ahead to Hollywood, January 15th, 1995, you, Sabu was supposed to put you through a table at the end of the match. Right. What happened? Dan Farron, the promoter, wanted to, had had me and Johnny Legend do a confrontation, etc. And he wanted to do a match with Sabu versus Ultraman. And he said, well, I got a great idea. Ultraman. <laughs> Brenda's favorite. <laughs> My twin sister loves his Brenda's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris and I used to have a twin sister. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And Jenny X is the other one. Uh, <laughs> <you're blush>. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Sabu, uh, you know, hurt his ankle, of course, right at the beginning of the yeah. match. Yeah, well, what got me was Dan yeah. Farron said he put us in the match. Yeah. Me and Johnny Legend managing Sabu and Ultraman. I said, great, listen, I would lay across the table for the moons all through the table because I was putting together, you know, audition tape, whatever, and I thought that would be the shit. And um, Dan says, oh, well, sure, you know, we'll talk Sabu, blah, blah, blah. We get there the night. We drove all the way to L.A., me, Ron, and Stacy drove all the way to L.A., get there, and Dan's like, well... We haven't told them yet that you guys are managing. Yeah, and what, what we want to do is have you guys do something at the beginning and then chase each other out, so not to interfere in their match. But you guys will be managing earlier, and you know, I'm just like, and, you know, you and Stacy will manage them. And I'm just sitting there like, well, just tell them that we're going to manage them and ask them about the table. Well, maybe about the table. We'll see. Dan was scared to even ask them. Yeah. So Ron says, let's go back right now and just talk to ourselves. Okay. So me and Ron went back there. Ron says, Sabu, how you doing, boy? And you remember JR? Sabu's like, yeah, yeah, how's your head? And I said, um, oh, cool. Took a few stitches. He's like, oh, okay. And I said, you know, tonight they got me managing against you, you know, and you're going to have a manager, you know, because, like, we have a few going, but we're going to chase each other out at the beginning of the match. We won't be there for each other. He says, oh, cool. And I said, but, and here I go, right? I'm telling the promoter, the promoter's not sure about it. I said, they want us to do something at the end, though, an angle with me after the match where you leave me lying. Oh, okay. I said, so I was thinking I'd uh, take the moonsault through the table, and he stopped lacing up his boots, and you take the moonsault through the table. Yeah, me. I'll take the moonsault through the table. He's like, okay. It doesn't hurt like that. And Al Snow is walking by, who had that crazy match with him a few months earlier, many matches with him. And Al Snow's like, yeah, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. And he sort of walks away from me. It's like, he's telling me, dude, don't do it. And I'm just, and Sabu's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And I said, okay, cool. So then... Then me and Stacy took Sabu outside, smoked a joint with them. Stacy said, you got a joint. Sabu said, cool, I'll smoke out here. We smoked a joint. Cause we, then I figured, okay, now, now that I got him high, he's not gonna fucking, he's not gonna try to kill me out there. He'll try to do a decent moonsault through the table and not aim his knee for my face. You know, he'll try at least. I, he might still, but you know. So we went out and we got high with him. Everything was cool. Then the promoter starts saying, well, well, okay, Sabu told me the only 
problem would be, you know, if they had a second table, because they were using a table in their spot, he was going to put Ultraman through it to win. I said, cool. And then Dan starts saying, well, we can't break the other tables. There's three tables there. We can only break one. It's like, fucking get me a table. We'll reimburse you. Me and Ron said, we'll send you the money for the table when we get home. Fucking, they bring out a bingo table. A little bingo, like you play bridge on, one of those little ones, and said that. Like if my body would hold up on that. And they set that up at ringside. And Sabu said, that's not going to work. I'm just like, fuck, whatever. So I'm just sitting there. And then Sabu comes up to me and says, listen, I know where the other table is. The shirts are on. They don't think I know where it is, but I'm going to grab it anyway. So after the match, I will grab that anyway, bring it in the ring, act like I'm going to moonsault it. You come running in yelling at me. I'll get down, point your finger. I'm supposed to point my finger at Sabu. He said he'd grab my hand, grab me, slam me on the table, climb up, moonsault me through the table. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that'll work. That's good. That's good. So then we came out for the match, chased each other back. They went, did their whole match. Sabu broke his ankle, like in the first spot. You got the footage of yeah. the bag and everything. Oh, yeah. Flying right over. Fractured his ankle yeah. or something. So yeah. he's working on like one foot with a like, fractured ankle and did all this shit. Went up to that bingo table they had set up for me, and with one swipe of his fist, he broke it right out. <laughs> it just popped out. He kicked it all the way. Like, get that shit out of here. <laughs> and fucking um, broke his ankle, did the other spot. And with his broken ankle, he just hobbled back, and we didn't get to do the spot. So that was how that worked. And I don't know if I told you the story about Alf Snow. That's family. what I'm asking you. Yeah, go ahead. So then we're a family a couple weeks ago, and Al, I'm talking to Cornette. I told Cornette, look, I'm going to go gas up the van before we leave. And Al Snow was like, wait a minute. That's the guy Sabu hit with the chair. Like that. I'm like, oh, you saw that, huh? He's like, you were the one who was down there after he hit you with a chair, and you wanted to get moonsaulted through a table, right? And I'm like, yeah, you were trying to say to me, oh, it doesn't hurt. And he says, oh, no, I was telling you, it does hurt. Don't do it. And I'm just sitting there, like, I know, like that. Cornette's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy hit you in the head with a chair, gave you like 16 stitches, and you were still gonna let him moonsault you through a table? And I was still like, no, 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 it's Cornette. Listen, he went to the promoter, made him put a table at ringside, and said to Sabu, will you please moonsault me through a table real quick before the match? Cornette's like, JR, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> so that was pretty funny. I also never told him that. Yeah.